And I think that uh, if we really want to help our patients, we really have to encourage them to come out and tell us exactly what's bothering them, to ask them specifically about symptoms like pain and fatigue because they really are affecting the patient's quality of life, and really to demystify the whole discussion around symptoms in prostate cancer because um, I think men sometimes are trained not to bother their doctors. They're told really that um, they should be stoic and take the pain, and we saw some of those results in the study, and that's really not necessary, and in fact, it's counterproductive. And if the physicians are not aware of this, then they really cannot address those symptoms. So some of the tips I would give to my patients is write down your questions beforehand. Write down the things that are important to you because it's very easy in a visit with a physician when things are happening, lots of things are happening, to forget the question that you really wanted to ask. I would also say that uh, you should not be afraid to ask anything. There's really no such thing as a dumb question or a question that, um, that uh, your physician will not want to answer. If, if so, then you should find another physician. Basically, we're here to really provide care for you as a patient. And I think that uh, certainly symptoms are one of the most important things that we need to address for our patients. The Men Who Speak Up campaign, I think, is very important because it really creates an environment for men to start talking to their uh, providers, but also to their caregivers and really to the community that this is, it's okay. And in fact, it's better for them to discuss their symptoms because I think not until men start to do this will they really be able to help themselves. And I think this provides tools and resources for men to really understand what some of the symptoms of advanced prostate cancer are and to really understand that there are treatments that can address those symptoms. Over half of the patients had daily pain and they just felt like they had to live with these symptoms and we know that that's really not true. There are many things that we can do to, to treat and control pain. And really surprisingly, as many as one in five men, about 22 percent, uh, reported that really talking about their pain made them feel that, that they were weak. And this is probably something to do with the cultural uh, issues around how we raise men, boys to men and that they really are um, afraid of talking about pain and thus are undertreated for their pain. Well, one of the most interesting things is that as many as 70 percent of the patients actually ignored symptoms like pain. Um, and again, this gets at some of the cultural issues about how men may communicate uh, very important symptoms that they may be reluctant to do. The majority of patients felt comfortable talking about these symptoms, but in fact, when you ask them if they actually did discuss the symptoms, uh, only about half of the patients actually did discuss the symptoms. And that may be because, in fact, even though um, they say that they feel comfortable, when it actually comes to talking about their symptoms, um, they may be reluctant to do so. And that's where caregivers are particularly important because they may bring up some of the symptoms that the patients are, are actually experiencing when the patients may be reluctant to do so.